G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this week's video we're going to be looking at elemental effects. These are things like fire, ice, lightning, uh, acid, that kind of thing. And we're going to be creating them in a way which will be fairly quick to reproduce and to make, so they won't, we won't spend too long on each one. And that way, hopefully, those who have requested uh, elemental effects in animation can kind of muck around with the animation side of it themselves because we can't really animate each of them today and those who want to use it for the painting side of things in Photoshop can kind of take their time and make it more detailed so we're going to be in a bit of a mid ground creating it simplistically so that we can go through it so I've got this here this is my base this is my character who is summoning stuff and at the moment he's not summoning anything he's just standing there going I'm a hobo but uh, we are going to transform him from a hobo into a renegade mage looking dude. So this is our base. We're going across and our first one is fire. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a lighting base on this character because I want to show where the uh, flames will f f be affecting him. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the image of his body. I'm going to copy that frame and paste it above it, exactly above it. And I'm just gonna color the whole thing in red for now. And I'm going to put that on a, what do you call that? I'm just gonna show the edges and lock the frame underneath and I'm gonna divide this into two halves. And I'm gonna do this in such a way that it kind of follows the outline of the guy's face. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop that out I'm just going to do this for all different sections of places that protrude that the light will reflect against. So that's something to kind of keep in mind when you're doing this stuff, is that you're not just drawing uh, a light effect, you're also drawing how that light affects the things it's lighting, if that makes sense. So you're not just drawing the fire, you're drawing uh, the glow on the surfaces of things nearby that the fire is reflecting upon. Because these things affect more than just itself. Now, I'm probably confusing you. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything in particular right now. I'll just keep going so you, you can see the final result and hopefully it will be clear. Because it's hard to kind of see what I'm doing while I'm doing it in this mode. Okay, so when I zoom out now, you can see that when I take off the wireframe, I've got this red edge glow. And the idea that I've tried to follow, basically, is that if I had a light in this hand, a really strong red light, and a red light in this hand, where would that light bounce against? It would be on the edges of his body and on the edges of his face, and uh, particularly more strong around the arm area, so I should probably make it a bit more strong around there. So, this is much harsher than it's going to end up being, but I just wanted to get that basic thing done because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select a gradient, just a simple gradient like this, and paste it like that, but I'm going to change the properties to be on the inside a really faint 100%, oh sorry, 0% alpha yellow, and then on the other end an orange and bring it really low to maybe 20% alpha. Okay, so in fact I could make that a bit stronger and I'll make it a bit more red and let's go 40% see how that looks. Okay, so I like that. So now that I've got my glow, I'm going to paste that in a way that adds that bounce to all these areas of the body. Okay, so now what I want to do now is refine it by selecting the gradient transform tool and just stretching it in a way that makes all of them look fairly even. Because the problem is this one drags across more to the middle of the body than the other one because the line goes out more. So I'm just gonna make them look a bit even and cover them all in a fairly even sort of way. Okay, so I've transformed my gradients for the most part. And this already, you can already begin to see that there's more happening here than in this image. Just going back and forth, you can see that there's a really effective sort of, ooh, there's light coming from somewhere, there's power coming from somewhere. And so it already makes him look somewhat magical. So now we're gonna jump into the fire itself. So I'm going to add a layer on top and I'm going to lock what we've just done so that the only unlocked frame is the one I'm about to draw on. 
And uh, just to recap, the layers that we have here, and this is in Adobe Flash, but you could do this in layers in Photoshop and things like that. On the bottom, we have our just black background. Then in front of that, we have this character. Then on top of him, we have that light that we just did. And next, we're going to be doing the element itself, the fire. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to zoom in on this hand and I'm going to create a orange material, a drawing with a brush. And I'm going to draw fire organically around his hand. Okay, now fire is something that you kind of get used to drawing. I'm not going to go into too much detail as to how I'm drawing these elements. You'll get a rough idea as to how I'm doing it. Go look at images on the internet. But the basic idea is you really want a flowy, organic look. You don't want anything too sharp or unnatural. You have flickers and it's supposed to look, you know, fairly rough. And I want it to kind of go along his arm a bit like his burning and I might bring it up here a bit more add a little flame lick that's another thing to remember with fire is you have little flame licks like that I'm going to come over to the other side and do the same thing so the fire kind of flowing along the arm like that I'm not sure I like that curve a lot of uh, the emphasis on the flames is about the natural curves that happen and you don't want them too big or too weird but you want them to look good at the same time so you kind of got to be a bit risky but you also don't want to be too too out there okay so now when I zoom out here we have our character with our rough form of fire on his hands. So what we're going to be doing is making these very filter based. So I'm going to select what I've just drawn, hit F8 and convert it to a movie clip and I'll call it fire. Hit enter. And now over here in my filters panel, which I should enlarge so you can see it better. Oops. Okay, so I've got filter on the, on the left. I'm going to click this little add filter button and go uh, glow. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a nice orange, rich orange, maybe even closer to red, and bring it out, make it fairly large, make it high, high quality. Next, I'm going to create another glow down here, add glow. This one's going to be much more to a neutral orange and it's going to be an inner glow. So we do this by cl clicking this box here where it says inner glow. Make it nice and strong, pop it out a bit. Uh, and I think the, the way they stack on each other affects how they show. I want to make it a bit clearer, so I'm going to go in here and make this one lighter and closer to a yellow, like that. So now when I come back out, you can see that inner glow much stronger. So I bring up the intensity. This outer glow, I'm going to make a bit closer to orange. Like that, and this one I'll make it a bit closer to... Uh, there we go. So now we're starting to get the look that we want. Now it's obviously too intense. It's too strong and I, I want it more transparent. So two things I'm going to do. I'm going to add a blur. So we can see there that we've added this blur. I'm going to bring all of these qualities up to high. And I'm going to bring my blur down to three. And I'm going to go up here to alpha. And I can bring the alpha down but I don't want it too low. So let's see how 80 looks. Okay, so I don't mind that, but what we can do, and I wanna see how this works, is we can work with blend modes, right? So you can see here, we've got display blending. I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to find one that I think works to make the fire look intense. And one that works quite often is screen, and that works quite well. So if I show normal, and you can see how that overlays, and then when I go to screen, it kind of adds that brightness that intensity. So I'm going to work with that. I quite like that. Okay, so I'm happy with how that looks. I'm happy with that. I'm going to now unlock and select the lighting that I've done on this character and I'm gonna make this outer orange. I'm gonna make it a bit more of a closer to yellow orange because it's gotta fit the fire color. Because that's the thing is it is like the, the color reflecting on him needs to be closer to the color of the fire itself. 
because before it was a bit too red and now we've got this nice yellow glow. And that is one thing that you'll kind of notice about fire when you draw fire is that it's more orange and yellow than it is red and people kind of associate fire with red. So this is our fire. I think I'm almost happy with that and ready to move on because we don't spend too long on it. But uh, just a couple of things that I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to go out here and add a circle gradient with no edge. So I'm going to add a circle gradient like this. I'm going to select that and on the inside, I'm going to make it yellow like this and on the outside, I'm going to make it orange. Make the outside 0% alpha and make the inside really low like 8. Uh, maybe higher than that. Maybe 24. Yeah, that's quite good. And I'm going to put one on each hand. Simple. And then what we've got is this glow emanating with the fire. And then last but not least, I'm going to change the color of the background to match the color of our element. So we have a fire element. So this background is much more fiery now. And I am pretty darn happy with that. So you can see immediately how much different that looks. Our base with nothing and then boom, he's a fire elementalist. He's, he's still a hobo. Maybe he's just a hobo on fire. Anyways, so next we want to move on. We don't want to spend too long on this. So the next one is going to be ice. And so we're going to use some of the things that we've already done to work with ice. So I'm going to select my background and change this to more of a blue so that we don't have to do that later. I'm gonna delete, uh, I won't delete the whole thing, I'm just gonna delete the symbol of the fire. And I'm gonna keep this these glows and I'm just gonna change the colors. So the inside is gonna be like a really light, almost white blue, and the outside will be more of a mid blue. Okay, so you can see already we've got that happening. And then I'm going to unlock and Remember, if, we're, if you're doing what I'm doing and altering the frames, you've got to make sure that you uh, hit F6 or you know duplicate that keyframe into a new keyframe. Anyway, so I'm going to select my gradient here and I'm going to alter the colors. So the colors that I generally work with with ice are a near white sort of light blue. And that's kind of the color range that we're sticking to. So already you can see that we've, we're, we're almost there. We've really got a lot of that done already just simply by that. So now we've got to figure out how we're going to make the element exist on him. So it shows that he's summoning this element and they're going to be in his hands. So I'm going to be working with two things with ice. I'm going to be working with the physical ice itself. So that would be like the chunk of ice crystals or whatever that is. But then I'm also going to be working with smoke or fog because as you know, if you have something really cold, there's this kind of smoke that comes out of it and that really helps add to that aesthetic. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'll, I'll keep the glowy layers on top. And I'm going to go in here, I'm gonna hide my glowy layer and I'm gonna zoom in and I'm just gonna grab white and I'm gonna draw some really hard crystal-like shapes like this. And I have a few, a few things on the outside just to kind of signify a bit of a floating look. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. I want it all to kind of zoom out. When I look, zoom out, I want it to look, yeah. So that even alone look like that in its base form looks like it's some, somewhat like ice. So if I select that, hit, hit F8, and I'm gonna convert it to a symbol and call it ice, hit enter. Now I'm gonna to go to my trusty filters again, because filters, 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 and gradients, gradients, gradients when it comes to effect. So what kind of filters will we use for this? Well, I don't want to, uh, to change the opacity too much, but I will bring it down to, uh, say, bring the alpha to 90%. And I'm going to add a, where am I? Add a glow. There we are. And it's going to be that really pale blue, like this. And I'm going to make it a nice, wide, strong glow. Bring the quality up. Like that. 
Even that I'm pretty happy with. I'm gonna add another glow. I'll make this an inner glow. <coughs> and I'll make this that pale blue again. And again, if it, uh, see what happens here is that it kind of, when I, oops, that's not supposed to happen. When I show it, it doesn't work in the way that I want it to. So I'm going to layer it on top of the other one. There you go. And it shows better. So you've got to make sure that they're kind of layered in the right way. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but just kind of dick around with it. That's what I do. Okay, and I want to make this a bit closer to white. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That is my ice. That, that's the ice in his hand that he's, he's summoning. And so, like I said, I'm doing this in two parts. That's the first part. The second part is the smoke. So, I'm going to just grab white. And I'll bring the alpha down to, let's say, 50%. <coughs> select a bigger brush. And I want to select a wind direction just to show that this smoke is kind of, it gives it more of a powerful feel like it's being, like you're in a wind, I guess it just kind of adds some sort of element of force. So I'm going to, in a fairly wide arc, create this mist like this. And it can look fairly rough because we're going to add a nice rough blur to it. And I'm going to make it come out of his mouth and nose as well, because he's breathing. So now when I select that, I will convert it to a symbol and I'll call it ice. What do I call it? Ice mist. Hit enter. And now I'm going to go in here, add blur, and I'll make it high quality. And then I'm going to go to my blend modes and let's see what these look like. I think lighten, no, screen, what, what works well? Let's kind of go through them. Multiply, no. Lighten I didn't like, screen. Overlay, overlay is kind of good. I kind of like overlay. So you can see with overlay, it's really faint. But maybe I don't want it like that. Maybe I want to grab it again. So what I've done here, so you can barely see it, but there's an overlay one there, and then I've duplicated the same thing again that I'm putting above that, but I'm bringing the alpha down a lot this time because I want some of that white color. So now it's got this like really kind of faint blue, and I'm going to select these and make sure that the uh, blur, I'm going to bring the blur up a bit, even more than that. There we go. So I am happy with that. So we can see immediately when I bring up the visibility of the glow on his hands. When I go across between these, we've got fire and we've got ice. And I really like how that looks. It's simple and it gets the job done. Bam, bam. Okay, so what is next on our list? Electricity. Cool, so let's delete what we don't want to use. Uh, in fact, let's start with a clean slate and delete all of it. Let's... Uh, reuse that background and let's change the color. So the color of electricity, what are we going to be doing for this? Uh, I suppose it would be kind of a gold, kind of a yellow for electricity. So I'll change the background color just so we've got the red, the blue, the gold. Okay. And it's really dim sort of color, but I, I want it there because it does change things. It does make it look quite good. Okay. So I'm going to select my gradient of this character from the previous frame, the blue one, and I'm going to make it look nice and electric. So I'm going to make it really close to white yellow. Okay. So the problem, the, the problem with this is it's going to look something like fire. So I think the closer we get to white without being white, the better. And the other thing we can do is change the gradient a bit so that the intensity is further up. Maybe not that far up. <laughs> About 48% it is at the moment. So I'm quite happy with that for our beginnings of electricity. And I also want to grab my hand filter thingies, whatever they are. I don't want the fire, but I want these gradients and I'm going to have it really close to white yellow again just like last time and same thing here in fact i want the center of the gradients to be white okay 
I want to make sure it's showing right. For some reason, we have a bit of an issue here. It's not showing. There we go. Okay. So I needed to see where my center was. Okay. So that's going to be white, and I'll bring it down to 40%. No, higher than that. It's going to be fairly strong. 30%. Okay. So that looks all right. So lightning should be fairly simple. In this layer above, I'm just going to grab my white. Now here's a general rule to keep in mind when you're doing effects like this, is that the center of these particles of these elements is often very bright. So we have the white of the snow and the inside of the fire. It's all, almost like I always tend to work with white as a base and then add in my colors and glows, right? So with lightning, I'm going to do these sporadic lines in and around the hand. Now, lightning is very much about, is it similar to fire? It's very much about um, making it look organic and random while also giving it enough structure to work well. So we've got a few elements that we're using here. We've got the, the random power sort of lines that we associate with lightning, but we also have these little dots that are like little sparks. So we can almost have that kind of come up, have that emanate out quite a bit. And I have it do the same on this arm. And you really have them sort of branch off each other, but also randomly stop. So like I said, oh, I didn't like that one. It's about randomness, but it's also about some form of structure. Add them out a little spark dots. Okay, so if I zoom out, I am happy with that. Look at that. He looks already like he's summoning lightning. I'm going to select that, hit F8, and convert it to a symbol. I'm going to call this lightning. If I can spell correctly, I think I've like Tourette's when my fingers on the keyboard. Lightning. I hope I spelled that right. So now with my filters, I'm going to add a glow, high quality glow, and this is going to be a bright yellow like that. And I am done. I don't want to change anything about that. I've done exactly what I wanted to do. So it's almost kind of got that lightning feel of Dragon Ball Z, like when someone goes like Super Saiyan, so powerful, that it's like, gss, gss, you've got like lightning that goes around them. That's that kind of look that we want to get. Now animating that is a completely different topic. So if you want to mess around with that on your own, go do what you want. But you know, a really simple way to create that lightning look. Okay, so we've got our fire, our ice, our lightning. Next on our list is acid. Woo, drugs, yay. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this background and I want this to be nice and a thick acidic green, like that. There we go, okay. So I'll lock that. I'm gonna select my gradient and I'm gonna, again, go into my thick acidic green color, like that. I like that a lot. Really like how that looks. Cool. And then I'll grab my glow, change this to my thick acidic green, as I have said many times. So there we go, we've got our electricity before and then we've got our acid. Okay, so how I'm gonna do this, zoom in here. I'm going to lock my layers and all I'm gonna do is, same as before, I'm gonna select my white as the base to work with and I'm gonna work like this. I'm gonna have this flowy sort of look like this. Okay, so it's like flowing up. And then I'm gonna get my eraser and do some random holes in it like this. Even on the edge, things like that. And then I'm gonna add random spurts out here. One of the things that kind of gave me um, the way I draw my acid sort of look is uh, castle crashes. The uh, green castle crash and knight. I really like the way the acid looks that he spits out like that. So I'm gonna work with this style and I'm gonna do the same over here. So I have my flowy sort of thing like that. I'm gonna select circles and just delete them. Some big, some small, make it pretty random, have it cut into edges really nice and fast and then add little things emanating on the edges there. And when I zoom out, this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna select both of those, hit F8, convert it to a symbol, I'll call it acid, hit enter. And as you know, we come over to our best friend over here and add glows. So 
So our first one will be an outer glow, a really thick acidic green, as I've said a thousand times. Bring it up, bring the quality up. And there we go, we've already got our base there, and which already looks quite good. Let's see what it looks like just messing around with blend modes. Now, I never used to really use blend modes that much, but my background artist uses them quite a lot, and they can be really, really cool. So, see, there we go, see, overlay already looks quite good. So I'm gonna bring the alpha down, I'm going to copy it and paste it so I have a duplicate and put that on top and then I'll take the overlay off and let's see what it looks like with a screen. No? Overlay, hard light. Ooh. Oh, that, see, that would look cool for something else. Even for this, it looks really good, the subtract. But add looks quite good. So I want to bring the alpha of that down. I'm going to select both of them by clicking and dragging and I'm going to add a blur. And there we go, I've got my acid look. So if I go back, you can see my electricity and then instant transition to acid. And then last but not, not, not least, we have magic. And I put in magic because I just, I guess I wanted like a bit of a generic one. Okay, so these are all very specific to elements. I wanted one that isn't in an element in particular. So I'm gonna have the base of this purple, a rich purple, because purple is a, very cool sort of magic color. And the key with the magic look I feel is like, is just color, rich color. So I'm gonna work with pinks and purples for this. And I'm gonna bring up the alpha. There we go, so already. See, I love how quickly, especially if you reuse the things that we've done, how very quickly you can change between these elements. So as usual, I select my glow on the hands. This one's gonna be like a, fairly white pink and then the outside's going to be a rich purple rich deep purple like that so already like that we've got what we want going on and then really simply we're just going to add kind of some fuzzy magic looking things so what i'm going to do is i feel like i want to have like clouds like this really simple i don't want to go too much more complicated than that and i just want to add some glimmers after that so i'm going to select these Hit F8, convert to symbol, call it magic. Hit enter, add a glow. Ooh, make it, um, let's make it this bright pink. Make it a high quality glow. And then add a blur. High quality blur. And let's make it nice and blurry. And go through some rendering options. So what have we got here? I really like overlay. Let's use overlay. I bring the alpha down. Actually, no, I'll keep the alpha up. Yeah, we'll just keep that. And then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab my white, I'm gonna add a layer on top, and I'm just going to draw dots like this. Just randomly have a few more up the top so it looks like they're somewhat flowing up. And really just kind of polka dotting in fact, I could just select this, copy it. Whoops, I don't want to copy the, that. Copy this, bring it across here. There we go. And what I also want to do, let's color in the white of his eyes like this, just with white. And let's have it kind of go over the edges like this. Have a few sparky dots that kind of go out. I probably could have done something with the eyes with the other ones, but let's just keep it for magic. Select this, hit F8 and call it Magic Sparks. Hit enter. I'm gonna add a glow, make it high quality, and we'll make it, what color? Mm. Let's go a custom one. I wanna go kind of a purple, nice and bright. See how that looks. I wanna really bring up the strength of this. And then we'll add a blur, but I want it really a low sort of blur. So let's go high quality blur. Let's see what it looks like with two pixels. And I want to go into the eyes section and just kind of make it bigger because with the blur it kind of doesn't cover the eyes completely. So now I want to go back out. There we go. That's what we want. See that looks cool. That looks very much like magic. And our last little thing that I want to do, <laughs> I really don't have to but I really want to is I'm gonna select my circle drawing tool and draw a gradient like this, just a circle gradient. 
I'm going to make the inside white, the outside white, but zero alpha. And I'm going to squeeze it and stretch it like this. I'll make the inside a lower alpha. And now when I drag it across like this over his eyes and let go, bam, that's all I had to do. <laughs> and all of a sudden you've got, you've got this magic glow. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a really quick run through. And even in the space of half an hour, we've gone through and we've created from this base, fire. <laughs> Next, ice. <laughs> Do you like my sound effects? Next, electricity. <laughs> Next, acid. <laughs> That's my acid sound. And then magic. <laughs> There you go, there are my sound, sound effects. All right, and I am very happy with how these turned out. And you can see with each of these that they look very clearly exactly what we're trying to portray and very different from one another and they're really simple to do. And you can do them in more detail for painting, but you can also just use this amount of detail and use it for animation. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and have a wonderful day. Till next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.